Hi everyone, this is Mateusz Kołosowski. Welcome to this new video series, uh, the topic of which is going to be attacking the king in the center. Of course, everyone loves to attack. Uh, everyone prefers to attack rather than defend, this is obvious. Um, but especially at the very beginning of your chess career, let's face it, you don't really know how to attack properly. And that's why uh, in great many situations we see uh, on attempts to win the game very early and unfortunately those, those attempts are uh, sometimes even successful and very often we, we see games played like this e4, e5, queen f3, knight c6, bishop c4 attempting to give the checkmate on f7 straight away um, but once your opponents get the idea of how to defend against those um, very straight, straightforward tries, for instance by playing knight f6, uh, you may find yourself in, in great trouble and uh, a great depiction of how not to attack uh, could, actually, could actually be a sequence like this. Knight h3 with the idea of playing knight g5 and once again attacking f7 uh, the object to be known uh, to be the known to be the the most vulnerable um, object in the entire game uh, but then knight d4 taking advantage of the queen being developed too early queen c3 for instance and all of a sudden comes bishop b4 queen b4 cannot uh, cannot be played due to knight c2 so once again the queen needs to be moved once again queen d3 d5, e takes bishop f5, and strangely enough, even though it was white who started the attack, it is black who's going to conclude it, because as we see, uh, black already has four, four minor pieces, all of them are greatly positioned, they are coordinated, attacking uh, white's pieces and the pawns placed behind them, for instance, queen g3 and knight c2, attacking both the king and the rook and we see that if uh, the game is going to be finished early then it's probably going to be black uh, who's going to win it. So this is how not to con construct your attack, how not to attack um, and how not to play by developing your queen so early and trying to hope that uh, the opponent will not find the way to defend. I strongly believe that uh, attacking the king in the center, because this is what we are going to talk about, is um, a skill that every single chess player needs to acquire uh, sooner or later. Of course, the sooner the better. Um, it's especially important for the developing players because, um, let's face it, especially at uh, lower levels of, of chess, um, players don't really uh, pay that too much attention to their kings and they play uh, recklessly very often and that's why it's it's possible to take advantage of those situations. It's not that easy to win against uh, a grandmaster by just attacking his king which is stuck in the center. Of course it, it does happen but not so often. Um, but anyway, um, I would like to show you and explain how to do it properly, how to attack the king in the center properly, why it's easier to attack in the center than comparing when it's uh, when it's placed, uh, for instance, by on on g8 or g1 uh, after it's castled. Uh, I'll show you and give you a few guidelines on on how to do it, how to find good moves leading to a dangerous attack, and. I would like to depict the proper way of attacking basing on uh, an old but very famous game played by uh, the one and only Boris Spassky, the uh, one of the world champions and the so-called uh, master of initiative. Uh, initiative is what Boris Spassky was always famous for, for his uh, great uh, attacking skills and, tr and being able to... Um, transfer his initiative into a 
full attack, very dangerous attack, and very often being able to win the games um, by simply delivering checkmate. So his opponent is um, Aftonomov. It's a game played uh, in, in, in the Leningrad Championship, Junior Championship, back in the days. And there's d4, d5, c4, d takes c4, it's queen's gambit accepted, uh, knight f3, knight f6, e3, e6, bishop captures c4. As we see, white already managed to take the pawn back, c5, castles a6, queen e2, so white is developing the, the pieces, uh, black in turn tries to get some um, some space on the queen side and also deliver, uh, develop the bishop to a better position which is b7 and the bishop is going to be very active on the long diagonal so it does make a lot of sense, bishop b3, knight c6 first, uh, and here Spassky played a very interest, interestingly looking knight c3. Uh, and you may wonder if he actually blundered the pawn on d4. And this is c takes d4 is what uh, happened. But when we look at this position more closely, when we think about it for, uh, for a few seconds or maybe more if you need uh, more time to, to calculate everything, we see that after rook d1, it's not possible to to protect that pawn on d4 because uh, it's it's pinned. It can it cannot go anywhere. The queen on d8 uh, of course needs to be saved. So black pretty much needs to accept the fact that this pawn is going to be lost. Of course, it is possible to to try to play bishop c5, but then we can imagine e takes d4 and uh, it will be well, it looks very risky, it's actually not possible to take on d4 because after all of the exchanges, uh, bishop will come to e3, pinning the bishop or, or then, yeah, pinning the bishop on d4 and then um, black is basically going to lose a piece. So rook d1 and here uh, the black player played bishop, bishop b7 to which white played e takes d4. Uh, and this already creates a very strong threat of threat of d5. Of course, targeting the knight on c6, also hitting the pawn on e6. Um, and for this reason, Aftonomov played knight b4, which looks very, uh, very natural. And this is the position uh, where I would like to stop for a moment. We see that uh, the white king is is very safe. It's on g1. It's been castled, so everything went according to the opening principles. The king is castled, uh, white has some control over the center, uh, the minor pieces are uh, are developed, mm, whereas the black king is stuck on e8. Uh, it cannot escape from the center because uh, as you see the bishop on, on f8 it's not developed yet and those highlighted pieces um, that are highlighted in yellow uh, have not yet been developed and this is quite important. It's not a huge problem for white because uh, he just needs to make one move with the bishop then wherever it's going to be placed it's going to be quite active. It's even active even though it's not developed because uh, the sco scope of it is actually quite big. Uh, whereas the black piece, black's pieces uh, placed on king side uh, are a source of worry for him because well you will find out in a moment that you cannot really leave your king in the center for so long um, when the position is open and here I would like to tell you how a proper attack should look like uh, first of all in order to attack the king in the center, you need to make sure that it's not going to escape from the center. It's very logical, isn't it? If it escapes, then we no longer can talk about attacking the king in the center. So first of all, make sure you prevent the king from escaping and you keep it for uh, as long as possible in the center. Second of all, try to open as many files and diagonals uh, 
to be able to use them to attack your opponent's king. If the position is closed, uh, the play is not so tactical, not so sharp, it's not that dynamic, so it's difficult to attack, whereas when the position is open, um, lots of pieces can be included in the attack and it's basically more difficult uh, for the opponent to defend. And when we speak about pieces, imagine them being your friends and an attack being a party. Try to ev invite all of your friends to the party and then the party is going to be really, really nice. So, as it was shown at the very beginning, when you just include your queen in the and the bishop into the attack, uh, black just needed one move, which was knight f6, to defend properly, and basically the whole attack did not have any chances of being successful. Whereas when you invite all of your all of your friends to the party, uh, so all of your pieces, or at least most of your pieces, then as a result, you can create more threats, you can uh, threaten multiple objects at the same time, and it's really difficult for the opponent to anticipate all of your possible attacking moves at the same time. Um, and his practical decision-making process is going to be uh, a very tough one. And la la last but not least, um, it's generally good to prevent the rooks from being connected. When the rooks are connected, they can protect each other, they can be used in a great many uh, nice ways, and if the king, as here, for instance, on e8, uh, separates the, the rooks, they cannot really be used in the defense, and the coordination, the overall coordination of the black pieces are going to be very bad, as you're going to see in a moment. Of course, when you attack, try to apply um, initiative, try to make threats on your opponent, try to make him find difficult defensive moves, and then you can make sure that your opponent is going to, to have a difficult task defending the position. Uh, in the position on the diagram, Spassky played an outstanding move. Let's face it, he made a very strong move when it comes down to attacking. Uh, he found a way to not only to open the position, um, open files and diagonals, as I said, but also what he managed was to introduce his pieces into the attack, he invited all of his friends uh, in just two or three moves. But also, he managed to keep the king in the center, his opponent's king in the center, um, for quite quite some time by creating constant threats. He played d5, which is a pawn sacrifice, but as you see, just a second ago, uh, of course, the bishop on b3 was very active, the queen was, was active, uh, but the rook on d1 was closed by the pawn on d4. And after d5, black pretty, pretty much has to uh, take this pawn. And now it's pinning the knight on d5. This is a huge change comparing to the previous position. Now the knight is pinned, the rook on d1 is very active, and we see that most of white white's pieces are very active. Um, as a matter of fact, there is also a tactical threat because um, after bishop g5, which happened in the next move, black is pinned so much that it's actually difficult not to lose a piece because the, the most straightforward threat, knight captures d5, bishop captures d5, bishop captures d5, wins a piece on spot due to the pin, pinned uh, pawn on e6 and also a pinned knight on f6. So, at the cost of a pawn, Spassky managed to open files and diagonals, keep the king in the center, the black king of course, and he also managed to bring lots of his pieces, most of his pieces uh, in the attack. 
The only piece that is not included in the attack is the rook on a1. Um, but the game is going to be concluded so nicely that he will not even have to use this rook. Uh, when we compare the situation, uh, black is pawn up, but his rooks are not connected. His bishop on f8 is not yet developed, and the king on e8 is stuck, and it will have to be there for at least a few moves. In order not to lose a piece, black played bishop e7. Uh, and here, once again, Spassky needed to play very, very fast, uh, very actively, very dynamically, in order not to allow black to castle kingside. And this is very important. Uh, of course, it's not enough to, to sacrifice, uh, sacrifice a pawn like d5, like Spassky did. It's important to know how to conduct the attack, how to proceed after the initial sacrifice. And once again, in order to find this, uh, to find a good move, the same rules apply. So the threat is kingside castle. White therefore needs to find a move which will prevent the black king from escaping from the center. And Spassky found a very simple idea uh, connected with the fact that um, the knight on d5 is pinned and also that black will never be able to open the e-file too much due to the previously pinned pawn on e6 so black can not allow the same situation once again and Spassky played bishop f6 and the point of this is that bishop captures if bishop captures f6 uh, white can just take on d5 bishop d5 bishop d5 and white wins a piece and for this reason uh, the black player had to recapture the, the knight on f6 with uh, the pawn, ruining his pawn structure and after a few simplifications Spassky achieved a position like this and now we see that uh, okay black has managed to defend for uh, a few moves it's not so visible how the, at at how the attack should be um, conducted, how to create more threats but on the other hand, we see that the king is still in the center. So if white manages to find one or two good moves, he can still create uh, more threats and make the black, black's task very difficult. We also see that the pawn on d5 is being pinned. It's a weak pawn. It's not protected well enough. Uh, and also the pawns on f7 and f6 are doubled, which makes it another weakness. And if you imagine a situation when black castles, which is the, the worst scenario for white, this castle is not really going to bring him that much of a relief uh, because this uh, pawn formation on the king side is so compromised that will not really provide it will not really provide uh, a shelter for the black king. So basically the whole position is so open that it's difficult to find a safe square for the black king of course spask knew that and um, he found an extremely nice nice move here once again he played very precisely uh, he found out that this knight on f3 is not doing much at this point because um, it cannot go to e5 and it's also possible to create a threat of knight c6 after knight d4. So he played knight d4 and knight c6 forking the queen and the bishop is very unpleasant. Also the knight could go to f5 as it did, it did in the game. And once again Spassky managed to, to prevent the black king from, ga from getting castled because after castles uh, knight c6 comes forking the bishop and the queen once again and the bishop is going, uh, the bishop is going to be lost. So after knight d4, uh, there, there was king, king f8, to which Spassky played knight f5. Once again, he brought his uh, piece into the attack. So the rook is attacking queen, and also the knight are, uh, is also attacking, which makes it a very difficult defensive task for black. Um, in the following moves, Spassky could play queen e3, 
and then go to h6 with the queen trying to make it a decisive attack queen g4 is also very unpleasant queen h5 there is basically lots of moves that black needs to consider and in order to prevent both queen g4 and queen h5 he played h5 which may look like a normal move like a decent try to defend this position but um, honestly there is nothing that can save black and whenever a position like this occurs whenever most of your pieces have been uh, played up op placed optimally and then very often it is possible to find this cherry on the top by using tactics and this is actually a, uh, such a case white played rook captures d5 taking advantage of black's uh, poor defensive coordination and after queen captures d5 there came queen e7 king g8 queen f6 and the threats of uh, knight e7 and primarily queen g7 checkmate uh, resulted in black resigning in this position which is well totally understandable it's not possible for black to survive this position anymore uh, so as you could see in just 21 moves it's possible to win uh, against your opponent in such a convincing way by applying those um, quite a few guidelines I mentioned so uh, once again I'm going to repeat them uh, first of all in order to attack the opponent uh, opponent's king in the center make sure that it's not going to escape from the center so keep it there for as long as possible second of all in order to attack the king in the center you need to make sure that it's going to be um, possible to just to attack it so open files and diagonals for your pieces to get the access to the opponent's king uh, the third thing you need to remember about is to bring as many pieces as possible it's not going to be a promising attack if you just include two or three pieces it's not enough because your opponent will always find enough pieces to defend properly so make sure you invite all of your friends to the party uh, it's also good to remember about the fact that it's good to make sure that the rooks are sep separated because they can provide lots of defensive resources and probably the last thing uh, make sure that you use the initiative and then the attack is going to be dangerous so create threats uh, make your opponent find difficult defensive moves try to attack multiple objects at the same time create multiple threats and then if you combine all of these uh, things that i mentioned i'm pretty sure you're going to win lots of very nice attacking games um I hope you enjoyed this a little bit longish video and that you're going to stay tuned for next examples. I'm going to show you more games uh, like this. And thank you very much. This has, this has been Mateusz Kołosowski for Mind Sports Academy.